Digicam is an open source cross-platform photo management and editing application that's been around for 24 years. With some recent updates, including AI face recognition, GPU acceleration, and auto tagging, I thought it was high time I had a proper look at the app. A serious tool without a serious price tag? Is there a cat? One of the issues with ditching an app like Adobe Lightroom is that you need to find a new asset manager for your photographs. You could just switch to a Lightroom alternative such as Capture One and use its built-in file browser, but you'd only be switching brands and Capture One is not actually that much cheaper. With Lightroom out of the frame, you might also decide to keep asset management and post-processing separate, giving you the freedom to switch between different raw editors whenever you chose. And there are a few options out there for Windows, Mac, and Linux, but most of them are commercial products too. And if you ditched Adobe due to the cost, then you're not really improving your situation. One possible solution is to embrace the world of open source software and apps built and maintained by enthusiasts that are completely free to use forever. And as a venerable member of the open source community for 24 bloody years, Digicam is a solid option, a powerful fully featured asset manager built specifically for photographers that offers complete organization, editing and workflow capabilities. Before we get stuck into the review, a quick tangent on open source, because it's important. And two points that need to be made. The first is that you need to embrace a Soviet Cold War era design aesthetic when it comes to the interfaces. The look and feel of these apps is usually the last thing that the volunteer development teams concern themselves with. And the best you can usually say about them is that they're functional. Secondly, you need to leave your can-I-speak-to-the-manager attitude at the door. The software's free and it comes with absolutely no guarantees that it will work as expected on your computer. There's usually a strong community around these apps willing to help you out. But if you hit up the forums like a raging asshole complaining about the app, then the only advice you're likely to get is which part of your lower bowel to insert your head into. All right, that being said, Digicam is actually a decent looking app. It's a bit Windows 98, but it's thoughtfully laid out, themable, clear, and highly configurable. The main interface of Digicam is crammed full of options and features. You certainly couldn't accuse it of being under specified. So this is the kind of the main thumbnail view here. I've just indexed a couple of folders here with some photographs. And in this thumbnail view, you can see we've got some individual shots here. And in this particular case, we've got a group kind of equivalent of a stack in Adobe Lightroom. It has some very advanced options around that, which I'll touch on in a minute. Over on the left here, we've got kind of search functionality, if you like, where you can search on tags or dates. Uh, there's also a map option. If you go to the search function, this is kind of a way of mimicking the kind of smart album functionality you get in big asset manager and raw editors, because you can create quite an advanced search based on dates and tags and that kind of thing, and then save your search. Over on the right-hand side here, you can see we've got access to all the various metadata. So we've got EXIF, make a note, the IPTC information, XMP, which is the sidecar file, if there is one. And we've got EXIF tool, which is brilliant. A huge amount of EXIF data in EXIF tool, if you like, drilling down into all that sort of information. We've also got the kind of the properties of the image, access to the map again on the right hand side. If you've got geolocation data in it, any captions you've added to it, 
and Myriad tools. So the tools on the right here, you can tailor to your requirements. When I first installed Digicam, this was absolutely full of features that I was never going to use, like access to Box, the uh, online cloud service. And I sort of thinned it out just to the ones I wanted to use. And that's kind of the story of this app, that you can tweak and modify it to be what you want it to be. And the app will, you know, accommodate you in that regard. Uh, along the top here, we've got access to some more advanced features. We've got the preview window here, uh, a larger map. We can also view the images in a table form. So we can see, for instance, any tags have been added. Over on the left here, we've got image edit, a light table, batch queue manager import. Now these are kind of sub applications. So if I click on image or data, it won't open in this window. It will open a new window. Ditto light table. Let's open that one up and I'll show you how it looks. Let's say no to that. And as you can see, it's just basically uh, an image viewer. So you can tab through. Uh, if I click the full screen button, then we can cycle through the photographs. When it comes to straight asset management, it's actually more adaptable than Lightroom. And thanks to a similar database driven design, just as able to speedily manage complex libraries. For instance, it has built in versioning for tracking your edits, advanced tagging with Boolean search queries and fuzzy searches. Well, let's talk functionality now. And obviously, one of the big parts of asset management is getting your photographs into the catalog in the first place. And Digicam's a little bit different in that regard. There are basically two ways that you can do this. Firstly, you can import directly into the app from the import dialog box here. Uh, if I click on this little down arrow, you'll see every hard drive I've ever plugged into this Mac. Uh, but you, so you see your SD card in there. Down the bottom, you can see it's got Fujifilm X-T4 because I added my camera so I could plug the camera directly in if I wanted. So if you would just want to use the app entirely to handle everything, you can bung the SD card in and import from there. However, if you're moving over to this app from something like Adobe Lightroom, now obviously you have a pre-existing collection of photographs sat on hard drive or multiple hard drives. And the way you manage those is through collections. And you can see some on the left here. And the way you add them is slightly weird. You have to go into the preferences and go to the collections tab. And here you can see a couple that I've added already. So if I wanted to, for instance, add all the photos on my photos drive, I would come here, click on photos and click open, and it would then index all of those images. But I've just used some test galleries and folders that I had on my hard drives just to keep things simple and quick. So once you've added them in here and you click OK, they get added in the albums over here. So there's that gallery folder I was just looking at. Got this people folder, just some demo shots I downloaded. Uh, and I've also got a couple of fol folders of Fujifilm X-T4 RAW files that I added previously. So if we click on this folder, we can see the group functionality. So you see the little number three on the blue folder icon. That means that this is the equivalent of a Lightroom stack, which are very useful if you shoot bracketed or panorama or you just want to bunch a load of photographs together for whatever reason. The stacking functionality and group functionality in Digicam is slightly more sophisticated than Lightroom because you can group automatically, by the way. It will do this for you automatically based on an entire folder, but you can do it by time, by file name, or by time lapse slash burst. Digicam does have some photo editing capabilities built in, but I'm not sure I would recommend using them. I think this app is far better suited to just being an asset manager, something it does extremely well. Uh, I'll just show you the editing. If I double click on an image here and we've got the basic functions over on the right hand side here, or you can access them from the menu at the top of the screen. Uh, I think it uses the LibRaw raw editing suite and it's not terribly sophisticated and quite slow. I wouldn't recommend using it. 
much more useful to simply right click on your file. And if you do that, let's go back to the thumbnails, right click on a file and just open with, and you can have all of your raw editors here and just hop over to that, save your edits and back into the asset manager. In terms of features, Digicam has everything you need to manage a large collection of photographs distributed across multiple storage locations. The volunteer developers recently added facial recognition to the app, which works completely offline and in my testing was highly effective at recognizing and categorizing faces. There's also a full suite of geolocation and mapping tools, including GPX track import, drag and drop map tagging, just like in Lightroom, and reverse geocoding. There's no specific smart folder feature like you find in a couple of the commercial asset manager and editor apps, but the search function is sophisticated and you can save any complex searches you create, which is effectively the same thing. Batch processing is fully supported and enables you to rename, resize, tag, convert, or apply metadata changes across entire drives if you wish. I also tested the auto tagging capability, but I found it wasn't an effective tool, far too sporadic and with tags too vague to be of any real use. Digicam also has exposure blending and panorama tools. It uses Enfuse for the blending, which is a tool I love and actually often use in preference to Lightroom's HDR. The panorama tool uses Hugin, but has custom calls to some binary files in Hugin's tools directory, which took a bit of configuring. And when I did get them configured, I got a series of errors that stopped the stitching process in its tracks. It had been a long time since I last checked in on Digicam, about 20 years to be precise. And that was running on Red Hat Linux back in the day. And to say that it's come a long way in that time would be an understatement. It's a credit to the enthusiasts who maintain apps like this on their free time that it's as capable as it is. But that's not to say that it is without its problems. And as I alluded to in the intro, if you're going to use open source software, you have to accept that those issues are going to crop up and there may not be an easy fix. For the most part, Digicam worked well for me. Thanks to its database-driven design, it is fast and capable and has some features I'd dearly love to see in Adobe Lightroom. But it was also a bit erratic. There were occasions when I could not import a folder of photographs into the app, no matter which import approach I took. Then, when I did eventually get the folder to show up after multiple restarts and refreshes of that catalog, the new image scan would freeze midway through and I had to force quit the app. It didn't happen all the time though, and it may be a non-issue on the Windows or Linux builds, so bear that in mind. I couldn't get the pano stitcher to work no matter what I tried. Raw, JPEG or TIFF, it always bugged out with an error message, even though Hugin, which it uses for the stitching, was confirmed working fine on my system. I was sad not to get the panel tool working, but it did at least feel like I got the authentic open source experience, the software equivalent of flat pack furniture where you end up building it yourself and dealing with missing parts as best you can. I also experienced a few freezes, but it wasn't a persistent issue and it didn't seem to have any knock-on effects on the database. The raw image editing capabilities of the app are, in my view, redundant. Other apps, both open source and commercial, do a far, far better job. If you want to stick with free software, I suggest using either Darktable or Raw Therapy to edit your RAWs. For the most part, however, Digicam, in its current iterations, is a fast and capable asset management tool capable of handling the indexing of very large libraries with impressive speed. I was surprised to discover that the thumbnails in the library loaded faster than the same files do on Adobe Lightroom Classic. It has a comprehensive metadata system, fast and capable search, full geolocation and GPS tools, batch processing, file versioning, and a fast facial recognition system that on my M2 MacBook Pro ran far faster than Lightroom's. Thanks to 
price gouging by Adobe, there's a growing interest in alternatives to the creative cloud suite, and open source apps like Digicam are a strong alternative. The big problem with a move from Lightroom to Digicam, though, is that you will lose all of your edits, since Lightroom's sidecar files are not compatible. You could, in theory, bake the edits in by saving those files out as a TIFF, but that's as close as you'll get to moving them. You would get to keep your keywords, captions, star ratings, GPS tags, and any other IPTC or XMP fields. But any adjustments, exposure, brushes, masks, etc., would be gone. I'm often asked in the comments section of the videos I upload to this channel for recommended alternatives to apps like Lightroom and Photoshop. And when it comes to asset management, and as long as you accept that you would lose all your edits, Digicam is an excellent choice. It's a bit rough around the edges and has a quirky approach to importing an existing library of photographs. But in the land of paid for bloat, a free workhorse with a few strange habits isn't the worst deal going. And that will do us for this look at Digicam. Have you ever tried this app? Would you consider making open source software a part of your regular everyday workflow? Do let me know in the comments section below. If you enjoy this content, please give it a like. If you got value from it, please consider subscribing to my channel for more photo, video, and drone-related content from me. Till the next time, guys. Ta-ta.